Okay, um, what a game. Uh, as far as as far as the injuries uh, go, um, really don't have much much for you at all, um, other than the guys, Chris, Willie, um, Legarius, um, you know, missing from our from our defensive side of the ball and Josh from the offensive side. Um, I'm proud of the guys that stepped up and did a nice job in their in their place. Um, our fans were incredible. A lot of red here, uh, which is a beautiful thing, uh, always. Um, Brendan Staley, um, what a great job he's done with the Chargers and, um, you know, I might have just said his name. Did I say it right? Okay, good. <laughs> Losing my brain here. Um, but what a great job he's done uh, with this team. And uh, it was a battle. You know, it was like two heavyweights going after each other. And um, we were able to uh, have the ball last. Uh, you know, my echoes off to Melvin Ingram for winning two coin flips. And, uh, and here he comes back <clears throat> to a team that he loved for all those years and um, had an opportunity to um, put on the uniform of his rival, one of the rivals, and, and do such a nice job for us. So um, Nick Bolton on defense had a nice night uh, with 14 tackles and Yang uh, stepping in at tackle back in a tackle and did a good job. He kind of persevered through some ups and downs. He's going against one of the better defensive ends in the National Football League. And he got him a couple times, but he also Yang, hung in there and got him a couple times. So uh, it was a great battle to watch. Um, offensively, um, Pat, you know, you got an idea when things, you know, I mean, he just keeps firing. and. That's a part you love about him. He's never, never out of it mentally of a game. He just keeps rolling 400 plus yards. Um, Tyreek Hill was was uh, unbelievable with the job that he did. Uh, his energy level, man. I wish I could tap into that man. He, he's unbelievable with endurance, quickness, all those things combined, speed. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> for for the old man Kelsey, um, you know. Uh, when everybody's talking about him losing a step or being off his game, here he steps up and um, looked pretty fast to me. Man alive, he was rolling. So listen, I, I'm uh, the, you know the offensive line, defensive line. Every, every, you know this is one of those games. Everybody did good. The coaching staff uh, was incredible. <clears throat> there was never any panic on the sideline, which um, I appreciate and. Uh, EB had a, a great game plan, as did Steve Spagnuolo. I mean, his, his that, that defense is rolling right now, and his his preparation is has been tremendous. And uh, and then Dave Tobe, um, after that first one, he made a few little corrections in there, and uh, special teams took off from there. So, anyways, with that time, yours. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, we have some great defensive stands, but when 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 the team. Um, Got that, got that uh, fumble down at the goal line, and then turned over. What did you say to them? Obviously, you know when they, when they got the got the fumble, gave it back, and they scored. Yeah, I said we got a lot of time left. Yeah, we just, you just, you know, the guys know. They know when they make a mistake. Hardman on the fourth down play, and then through the interception when you guys were backed up. What was Pat moving at that point? Yeah, so listen, uh, he just he keeps firing. And, and so he wants to know what went wrong. He normally knows himself. And um, uh, so you just talk to him and make sure he just stays, stays with it and um, get, the, get whatever mistake is taking place, just get it corrected and move on. Go ahead, Vine. And yeah, he's really along the same lines with Patrick. I mean, you've seen it quite a number of times now. But is, are you at a point where you, you know you can count on that, that nothing going wrong is going to take him off? Yeah, so, always. Yeah, yeah. So that's – he's unique that way. You guys have been around him now for a few years, and, and you've seen just about everything here. So um, – but he's going to stick, stick with it, trust himself, trust the guys around him, trust the calls. He doesn't ever question that stuff. I mean, he just – Goes and plays, and I mean, there's so many little things that I appreciate from him, and uh, that's why he's 
one of the greatest, you know, so. Yeah, you're playing against a good football team, so not everything's going to be perfect. Um, whether it's a rush or transition between you and the back, and you're pulling it out, and you know it hinders a step. You know, they, I mean, there are all kinds of things. Or every once in a while, he throws a bad ball. You know, so I mean, that happens. It happens to every quarterback in this league. We're fortunate. Here to have a good one, and so so are the Chargers. <clears throat> Towards the end of regulation, obviously uh, Harrison Bucker, he's got a wide range of his ranks. How much consideration did you give to maybe allowing him to try a 65, 70 yard? Yeah, I felt like if we got to the 40, we'd probably be in the ballpark there. And um, you know, we, we just needed to get to that spot. We weren't we weren't able to do that. But you know, then by the time you know we ran out of time there, so we're down to five seconds. Took a knee and just said, "Listen, we have Melvin for the coin flip." <laughs> Andy, Andy, um, when you're in a must pass situation, down eight, down seven, um, what did you feel like worked with everyone that wasn't Patrick on the field that allowed him to? Be I, yeah, I just thought the guys, the receiving core, and tight ends, we were rotating everybody. Just try to keep them as fresh as we could later in the game, and I thought they all stepped up and did a great job. So they they jumped into a little bit of man coverage on us at the second half and a little bit more than what they had in the first half. So um, you got to you got to win one on one, right? And <clears throat> and then know where the hole player is or the thief robber player coming out of the sky. And so um, you know the guys handled that well and got themselves open and. And then after they caught the ball, there were yaks involved. So that, I thought that was big, too. You talked earlier about Adam Hancock. Nope. Um, you talked almost after every game about the margins are so small. Right? Yes. I was just wondering, if, is there anything to the idea that you guys have won this division for so long, if some sort of thing from those margins are so small, being on your side, is it just becoming your side? Well, tonight, yes. The last time we played them, no. <laughs> so, um, you know, they, it. I, I do trust our guys. I think they trust themselves, which is huge in those situations. You know, but um, you, you got to go out and you got to produce like this. So your backs to the wall, and you know the guys. You know they bear down when they needed to bear down, and uh, that was a that was a great job by them. Yeah. yeah I two, the one really quick one was Tyree just cramping, or did he tweak something? Yeah, he. Um, he had a couple of things just where things were tightening up on him, um, mainly because he was running like 50 yards every play down the field. And uh, so we were just trying to get him a blow in there so he wouldn't cramp up, you know. But he, uh, he's unbelievable, man. His endurance for a fast guy is phenomenal. I mean, it's hard, hard to find that in this league that can run with his speed play after play after play after play. Travis as well. You, you referenced it in, in your open, but obviously there has been conversation about his past few weeks. Could you sense just the emotion of a game like this from him? Um, well, he's, he's emotional every game. I mean, he loves to play. Um, uh, I, I would tell you that the three catches, the last two games that he's had, you know, six total catches, um, uh, you know, I could do a better job of working him into the, the mix a little better. And and so we, you know, EB and I sat down and threw some things together along with Mike and Joe and Greg Lewis. So we, we, we met just to try to find ways. Tom Melvin's always got a bunch of ideas. And so we threw a few of these things in there and, um, you know, it worked out, worked out okay. But again, his endurance down the stretch, so, you know, for an older player. I mean, he's kind of our elder statesman, right? So I'm, I, I keep saying that. It's not like he's over the hill by any means. Um, but <clears throat> he, uh, his acceleration after the catch, I mean, that was, that was something, man. It's that late in the game. Hey, Andy, I, I know what it felt like watching that game. I'm just wondering from a coach's perspective on the sideline to be involved in a game like that, what is it like? You know, it's kind of crazy because not until the moment has ended, uh, you're just tunneled in on the game plan. She's trying to find the next thing that you think might work. And so, and then when it's over, you go, whoa, you know, 
if I could jump, I'd jump, you know, with excitement. But um, it was just, uh, it was, that locker room was great. I mean, it was phenomenal. The guys after the play, um, well, walk off, it's like a walk off home run, you know, in baseball, but you have a walk off like that and the celebration, you look over and you see the guys jumping around and you know all the hard work that goes into it. I mean, that's satisfying. Kelsey, what, what, was there anything else about tonight's game that allowed him to have a big night? No, listen, I, I don't think so. I mean, he, uh, he's, been, these guys have been so sore the last couple of days. I mean, I, and I, I would imagine they were the same way on the other side. But to muster it up to get ready to travel and then play, um, you know, on a Thursday, that's that's not an easy thing. So some, there's a lot of mental preparation that goes into that. And, um, and not that there isn't for the other days, but really for these Thursday games, it's you got to get yourself right and do it quickly. Coach, uh, you always talk about the next man up mentality. Uh, last week down, with uh, the guys, Tyron talked about rallying to play for Snead last week, down Snead this week, and also Chris Jones. Talk about the grit with the defense. The guys yeah, and play. Willie, right? So, <clears throat> so they, uh, you know, Bolton steps in, right, and has a big day. Um, they all, they all uh, picked up. The pieces, you know, 56, you know, I mean, uh, 49 back there again, uh, you know, starting and did a nice job. You got 21. I mean, I can, you, you know, the guys. So, and making plays, just going, no hesitation. It'll be good to get them back, though, all those guys, you know. Cause, so just to follow up on, on Nick Bolton, um, in your conversation with Steve Spagnuolo, just how much has Bolton reminded you of a veteran here? Yeah, listen, he's he's gotten better every opportunity he's had to to play, <clears throat> and um, he's got a bright future down the road. Uh, v did a nice job bringing him here, and uh, Brett and his scouts have just uh, really studied him. He's a great kid. Uh, he doesn't say a whole lot, but he he knows knows what he's doing, and and the guys know that. The veteran players know that. And then he's he's a sure tackle. He had a couple tackles down the stretch there. Um, as did 21. I mean, these, these are, those are sure tackles right there. I mean, you know, so. Andy, when you see them keep going for fourth down plays and, and you guys stopping them, what does that say about the magnitude of the game, how they approached it? And they, did that change anything from your perspective? <clears throat> yeah, so that's what they do. I mean, they do it with everybody. It wasn't just us. I mean, that's one of the things that they they We knew that coming into the game that, uh, if it's fourth down, it's, I mean, the head coach has said it. You know, he said uh, that's like third down to them, right? So, um, but you got to stop them, and so our guys got enough of those uh, to help. And we kind of went through the same thing, so we've got stopped too. But you know, you, it's a long field to drive. But both teams ended up driving the length of the field with pretty good drives. So, uh, coach, obviously, great win. Players will probably have the weekend off, come back Tuesday. With all the new protocols that the NFL sent out, what was your message to the players in the locker room on one on, on Thursday? Yeah, I wasn't giving them any time off. No, I, I am. But, but you're like, yeah. So, anyways, they're, they're getting a little time off. But what's your message with the new protocols? Be safe. Be smart who you hang with. Be safe. And then the leagues, we went over all the new rules. Rick did uh, just now. So, they would they would know what's expected. All right, thank you. All right, good. Thank you.